Folks, if you are obeying the law and commandments of God, you're doing enough. You're doing all you need to do. Right? And by the way, you aren't doing that yet. None of us are. We're still sinning. But, but that's what we should be working on. Right? This is where good works are. This is where we should be improving our lives and sanctifying our lives. And doing our best with the help of the Holy Spirit. This is not necessary. It's not commanded. If it's commanded, then it's God's will, God revealed will, you should do it. This is not commanded. Right? It's not an obligation. You don't have to do it. Right? Now, um, and because once you realize you don't have to do it, I think these practices disappear. Right? Because this is beautiful. And this, despite sometimes being awful, is ultimately deeply beautiful. Right? But this, I think, is unnecessary and destructive. So, um, all right. Um, that would be good enough to start there. Yes. Obedience is good enough. Obedience to the revealed will of God is good enough. All right. Hearing God speak, the second cliche. Um, God speaks today. He speaks through his word. That's how God speaks. Um, we don't hear God's voice. That's, that's probably the best way to put it, hearing God's voice. Because that's not how we hear God's word. And here's, here's some more good news. We hear God's word through human voices. This goes all the way back to the prophets. right? When they said, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, what followed next was God's word, and it was in a human voice. When the apostles preached the gospel to the world after the resurrection of Christ, right, that was God's word, and it came out of a human voice. When our Lord Jesus Christ himself taught us, right, that was God's word. And God bless him, it was in a human voice. We don't hear God's voice by listening to something other than human voices. Yes? Are there ways to know when the human voice that we're hearing is is of God's voice? Because there's a lot of noise. There's a lot of noise. Right. Um, here's the thing about human voices. They're all human. Right? Um, when you listen to the voices in your heart, they're all your own. Every single last one of them. Not a single one of them is God's voice. It doesn't happen. Here's the good news. It doesn't have to be God's voice for you to be for, for it to be worth listening to. It's okay to listen to the voices in your own heart, even though they're just yours. It's okay to know the voices in your own heart. Self knowledge is not forbidden. Not by the Bible, it isn't. Right? It's okay to listen to the voices in your heart, even though they're fallible, can be wrong, and are not God's voice. I'll talk a little, a little bit more. On the other hand. How do you know it's God's word? Well, if it's God's word, it's God's word. Right? So, every time you pray in your heart, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That's God's word. And you know that. How? Well, it's the revealed will of God. Every time you pray a psalm, you know that that's God's word. Right? And, um, you know, sometimes there's some questions when you pray something that's not directly out of the Bible. Is this a good biblical prayer? Right? And there's interesting questions about that sometimes. Right? Um, I sometimes wonder if I'm at a church where they have a liturgy that's uh, a little iffy. I wonder, is this a good biblical prayer? But when you're praying the Psalms, when you're praying the Lord's Prayer, you know you're praying God's Word. Notice, um, God's Word, human voices. That's how it always goes. Right? We just did that with, um, with the Ten Commandments. That was God's Word, human voices. Right? By the way, notice, we didn't do it in Hebrew, right? And it's still God's Word. We did it in English, not in Hebrew, and it was still God's word. Do you know why? Wonderful thing happened. Wonderful thing. Forty days after Jesus' resurrection, actually shortly after his ascension, called Pentecost, right? The Pentecostal experience is not the experience of speaking in tongues. Acts 2 is not interested in that experience. It never describes it. Acts 2 is very interested in the experience of hearing God's word in human voices, human voices, not the voice of the Spirit, human voices in your own language. And that's why the Ten Commandments, even in English, is God's Word. It's a Pentecostal experience. Right? The experience of hearing God's Word in your own language in a human voice. Right? Everybody on Pentecost heard God's Word in human voices. They did not hear the voice of the Spirit. They heard a rushing wind, but that's not, that wasn't communication. 
God's word, the gospel, is spoken in human voices. That's Pentecost. It's happening today. It happens every time you pray using the Psalms in English. Right? Every time you pray in something other than the Hebrew or Greek. Right? Actually, isn't that striking, actually? Um, the Lord's Prayer that we learn you know, in the New Testament is in Greek. And almost certainly Jesus taught it in Aramaic, maybe in Hebrew, but not in Greek. The New Testament itself, the Gospel itself, begins in translation. That's one of the lessons about Pentecost. It begins in translation. The words of Jesus that we get in the New Testament, they're all in translation. From the very beginning, the original is in translation. That's Pentecost. The original is in translation. Right? So, human voices, human language. God, in the incarnation and in revelation of his words to his people Israel, does that. That's why it's okay that these are human voices. It's okay that the voices in your heart are your own. Um, in fact, this all, I, I first encountered this, um, wow, uh, when I, the first philosophy course I taught here at Easter, uh, we were talking about the concept of revelation. It was striking. We talked about the concept of revelation, and um, I assumed that everybody knew that that meant the concept of scripture. But in fact, when I was talking about revelation, most of the students in the room were thinking about the voices in their hearts. <laughs> and so I asked him to write a paper on the concept of revelation, and this one poor student was saying, but how can you tell that it's really God's voice? And I thought, well, it's scripture. What's the problem? And I realized, oh, wait a minute. You're thinking that revelation means the voices in your hearts. Oh! And, I, and so I had to sit down and, and you know, respond to this paper. Um, so, you know, a, a great, my first great spiritual crisis as a teacher at Eastern. And I realized, you know, I better be straight out with this. Okay, look, I've got good news for you. All the voices in your heart are your own. All the voices in your heart are your own. That's good news. Let me say a little bit more about why. It doesn't have to be God's voice to be worth listening to, right? And you should, you should listen to the, your own voices. Right? Not, they're not infallible. They won't be a sure guide in all things, but you should know yourself. That's good, not bad. Let me give the, the key example of this. I, um, this is going to be a, a central example in my book. Um, another spiritual crisis I had um, was the first time a student in a class said, um, God told me to break up with my boyfriend. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> right? Oh, no. Um, of course, it's worse when the boyfriend says, I think God wants us to get together. <laughs> Um, there's really no excuse for that one. Um, by the way, my wife was trapped in a car with a guy who was doing that to her back, back before she ever met me. She was smart enough to say no. Um, okay. I, I, I didn't know what to think when this poor young woman said, you know, God told me to break up with my boyfriend. Um, it occurs to me that probably what was going on was something like this. Imagine some friend of yours coming home after a party, maybe, uh, coming home to her dorm room, and she's saying, Oh, I love my boyfriend so much. He's so great to me. He's so good to me. He takes such good care of me. He never lets me out of his sight. I can never go anywhere without him being with me. I can only, I only barely escape tonight. He just never, never lets me out of his sight. He's always watching over me, taking care of me, uh, 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 controlling me. Uh, 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 Two voices. One that's big and loud and not very smart, and another that's quieter and more uncomfortable and wiser. It's not the voice of God. It's not the voice of the Holy Spirit. It's her own voice. But the only way she could listen to it and take it seriously was to label it God. Because she didn't think her own feelings were worth listening to. What a terrible, terrible shame. That voice was a voice of wisdom, probably also, by the way, the voice of chastity. Because I expect the, the boyfriend was manipulating her and it was heading towards unchastity if it hadn't already gotten there. 